League. Uh, this game was played in Invent Team 56, and it was selected by FIDE Master Elect Enfork of Finland as Game of the Week for six, uh, Week 6. And I make a video of the game, and Enfork has provided notes, which I haven't looked at yet. When I'm done doing uh, my breakdown of the game, I will, uh, as done before, bring up Enfork's comments, and we'll see what he has to say. So you're going to get uh, two inst two instructors helping you for the price of none. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, I think this is extremely interesting, at least for the opening for me, because number one, it's an opening that I'm very, very well versed in, and number two, it's an opening I've played a lot, and number three, it's an opening I've covered several times on Team 45 League. So those of you that are watching the, all these videos are uh, learning things, and those of you that are not are going to lose games because the people that are watching the videos are learning what to do in these openings. So, what can I say? Watch my videos, you know? <laughs> All right. Uh, this becomes the symmetrical English. Now, I'm going to just come out and say one thing. I have what I believe to be the world's leading um, authority on this opening, his collection of books, and, and that's author John L. Watson, who uh, is here at ICC, and he broadcasts of FNs and so forth. Uh, back in 79 or so, he started uh, a four-volume set on the English opening. Um, and one and they're written in English descriptive notation, so if you don't know it, you need to learn it, and then you need to find these books. If you, they're still out there. You have to look, but they're there. Uh, one is the C4, C5 line. Another is C4, Knight, F6. One is C4, E5, and, and then the fourth volume is C4, all the other replies. And I know for sure he rewrote uh, the symmetrical one, C4, C5, and did that one in English, I mean in algebraic notation. It was published 1988. Somebody said he's updated some more. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. But uh, these are uh, among the best uh, opening books ever written. Uh, Anything by John Watson is excellent. He's, in my opinion, one of the best authors out there for openings because he not only does, does he uh, give games, he gives a lot of ideas and says, this is untested. Someone needs to try this. And he gives a lot of suggestions and so forth. Now, uh, granted, the, the analysis in these opening books is, what, 33 years old? Uh, there's, you're gonna, if you're going to use these, you're going to have to uh, be up on current theory, but that's not too difficult with databases now, because uh, maybe some of the ideas he had uh, aren't any good. I know some of them he suggested aren't uh, here in various books, but you know, you don't just take his word for it. You do a little research and uh, independent analysis, and uh, uh, if you're specializing in these openings, uh, you can really get some points, okay? Uh, what else? I wanted to say something else about about this, uh, this series. Uh, but anyway, uh, it'll come back to me as I remember. But it's it's oh yeah, here it is. I remember now when I played ICCF Correspondence Chess, got heavy into it in 1986, uh, and playing a lot of Europeans. I was using these books. I was playing C4, and I think that gave me a, a big advantage over my, uh, my European opponents who wouldn't have these books, and and even if they had them. <laughs> They might not be able to read them because of English descriptive notation. You know, the moves pawn to queen, bishop four, pawn to queen, bishop four. Uh, you know, just for those that don't know, you, you, uh, English descriptive notation, if you understand English, uh, see my arrow, I'm drawing the line between the uh, E and the D file. Uh, this, uh, here, I'll draw a line here. See, that's anything on this box is the queen side, okay? And anything on this box is the king side, okay? So here's a little lesson English descriptive. Now, it describes the moves. In a lot of ways, uh, it's got some superiorities over algebraic, but mostly it, it falls short. But anyway, uh, this is queen one, queen bishop one, because that's where your queen bishop starts, queen knight one, uh, queen rook one, uh, then King Bishop one, uh, King Knight one, King Rook one, and even back in the 1800s, they used to make chess sets that have a little uh, uh, a queen diagram of a queen in, emblazoned on the knights and the rooks, so you could tell uh, as they moved about the board which one started where, and you could use the notation uh, that way uh, to help to help you describe things. Now, there some of the drawbacks when you have like Bishop 
a bishop captures a pawn instead of in an algebraic you know, just bishop takes f6 and we know what you mean and in English descriptive you have to look uh, bishop takes pawn and now can that bishop take another pawn well if it can then you have to say bishop takes bishop pawn and maybe you can take a bishop pawn on the other side and so, <laughs> so you have to say bishop takes king bishop pawn and then you have to look at the other bishop can it take a pawn then you might have to say queen bishop takes king bishop pawn. You could probably get just get all kinds of confusion here. Try to do it, and who knows? Maybe one of those moves you have to that you have to look to make sure is not playable is actually a good move. So who knows? It might lead you to play a good move for once. But anyway, uh, that's just a quick intro on English descriptive. And then knight to queen bishop three. Does he play that? No, he didn't. Just go back. Okay, knight to king bishop three. And now knight to queen bishop three. Now we just write knight to bishop three because we don't need to use the the queen bishop three square because only uh, you know king bishop three is covered. So now knight to bishop three, pawn to king knight three, pawn to king knight three. Now just bishop to knight two. You don't need bishop to king knight two because this bishop here cannot move to queen knight two. Isn't English descriptive fun? Okay, bishop to knight two, castles, uh, o to o. Um, I think in the old days they put castles king rook or just castles because it's descriptive. It describes what you're doing. You know, blame the English. They invented it. <laughs> okay, one of the Americans was the English. All right. Anyway, um, pawn to queen four. Pawn takes pawn. Knight takes pawn. See, English description is easy. Anyway, uh, this is the divergence point that uh, I think is the critical position. And there's been a number of games covered already here in the league. There's this interesting pawn sacrifice with, with d6. And I've got videos on that. You have to find them. They're there. And it's a very interesting line that black can, uh, black can employ. And uh, I consider it the main line. I actually know knight takes knight is the main line. Knight takes d5 is the main line. What what black does is he plays queen queen to knight three or queen b6. Now this is a move I'm uh, not altogether familiar with, but I know it's bad. And and my first instinct when I looked at this was, well, white should play knight c2 here, and boom, that's exactly what he does. But I want to come back before I before I go forward. Uh, why do I know knight c2 is a good move? Well. I know it because I'm I'm used to playing this opening and I'm used to playing the themes and even some of the videos uh, I have shown uh, white can uh, do well with that knight to c2 and even on the d6 line there's nothing making white capture this pawn and give black uh, a lot of this pressure okay black gets uh, a nice little initiative for the pawny gambits and uh, white's going to have a little trouble getting his getting his pieces organized. Black's got act, got, got some activity. But I also know for a fact, because I've studied this line in depth, that white can simply do well by declining. And uh, and uh, white's got a very good game here. Uh, the game's equal, but it's, it's easy to play for white. So let's get to the main line. And I know that I've had people play a6 against me here. And uh, since they need to play d6 eventually, I just bring the knight back to c2 already uh, right now and and usually they'll follow up with d6 and then it's a whole other game and white does does quite well it's one of these openings uh, that uh, black just can, can has to I'm sorry black has to kind of walk a proverbial tightrope if he doesn't play it accurately and know the strategies he can get a bad game in a hurry but if black knows it black should be able to uh, achieve comfor comfortable equality. And let me just give you the basic idea of what black should try. As I was saying, this is this is the main move. I want to discuss this opening a little bit. And now d6, and then the key move is 10, queen to queen 3, uh, or queen d3. I'm just using descriptive for the fun of it. Uh, now, a good friend of mine, I haven't seen in years, per feeding master Perry Youngworth, he's supposedly playing on ICC, but nobody knows what his handle is. And I asked uh, our mutual friend, I am David Strauss, a.k.a. Igor, what's Perry's handle? And he goes, I don't know. I'm probably playing him and he doesn't know it and he's laughing at me. But Perry would play bishop f5 here uh, and then white plays uh, e4. And, and what this does is it shuts off the, the bishop's diagonal and they bring the bishop back to e6. And this is a perfectly good strategy. The other, the other strategy that black 
needs to know and it, it has to do it very carefully um, the way to proceed with this position is black play and I've just explained this before black plays a6 rook b8 uh, knight d7 knight c5 bishop d7 and b5 now that's a lot of moves white's got time to do things himself but black can pretty much get those get those things in those moves in uh, while white slowly improves his position and let's see one two three four five six moves for black to get that strategy going but if black doesn't follow that strategy he gets in trouble uh, easily in this opening if if unless uh, he plays the line that that Feedy Master Youngworth plays Bishop F5, and I'm not going to go into that. You'll have to look it up. But uh, this is it, it's a very delicate uh, situation that Black has to, has to understand the strategies here, because White just otherwise gets such a free free easy game. Okay, so let's get back to the main line and look at Queen B6. So what I did was I went in my bookshelf and I pulled out uh, English one dot 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 pawn to Queen Bishop four. And I said, well, what does Watson say about queen to knight three? It must be covered. And Watson gives it a dubious move. That's question mark exclaim. And his main move, he says, uh, is knight to bishop two. And he also says that white could play either e3, pawn to king three, or he could play uh, knight b3. And, and he's got a note with it in, in parentheses. And the exclaim within parentheses that means probably a good move look at that knight b3 not knight uh, not knight b4 that's impossible and he gives he gives some analysis which is uh, beyond the scope of this video uh, but he quotes a couple of games and maybe you could find this if you want to know let's see we have cup and good versus line ussr championship 1971 uh, other examples there's Keen Littlewood from Hammersmith, 1973. And then there's uh, Georgiou versus Buza, Romania, 1969. I think there's both a couple uh, Hungarian or Romanian grandmasters. Okay. Uh, but uh, you can look those games up on your own. It's beyond the scope of this video. But anyway, uh, knight to bishop 2, knight to c2 is a great move. And let me try to explain why. One of the, one of the principles about this knight is is it's doing, it's covering these two squares, okay? Uh, white doesn't have to weaken himself with pawn moves. Now, b th a3 uh, weakens b3 a little bit, okay? And then if he pushes this pawn to e3, it can weaken potentially d3 and f3. So this knight is doing uh, a nice job on c2. Also, what this and it's what happens in this game. This knight, at the, at the right moment, is going to redeploy, and White's going to get a nice uh, knight sunk in on on d5, and that's a great outpost for a knight, uh, especially when you have one uh, a knight backed up by another knight. And if Black kicks White out, he ends up with 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 a, a backward pawn on the open file. So white's going to get good minor piece placement uh, with this strategy. The other nice thing about, let me just get rid of these circles and arrows. The other nice thing about this strategy is this protects the rook on a1. And uh, I have a bunch of games where, I've, like I say, I've played this thing for years. I have a bunch of tournament games from the early 1980s. And I'll show you in just a second. Uh, with, with two people, two people did it. I couldn't believe it. Okay, b3, now uh, bishop e4, now or f5. What I would play in this position, and I'm pretty sure I've had this or something close to it twice, I would play e4 here. And white doesn't play this, but let me show you the point behind it. And I had two people go ahead and gobble like thusly. And, and you see, here's the point the knight of the n other point of the knight on c2. It comes back and collects the bishop on a1. Now, what white has done is collected two pieces for the rook. Black has a pawn for it, but uh, the two pieces are, are much better than the rook. And with this much wood on the board, white's going to, and with white possessing the two bishops, white's, white's going to win. Uh, 
the bishops will just open up uh, open up potential of kingside attacking attacking chances and eventually the maneuvering white will win a pawn and then uh, have clear a clear two pieces for the rook and then eventually win the game and I've had two people play this against me and that's exactly how I beat them and uh, uh, I was surprised they did it but they do it and and uh, let's get back to the main line so I would play e4 and let me just show you one other thing what I like to do in this position uh, th with the English you can't play it you can't play f3 but uh, if you can play f3 this pawn structure uh, in the English if you have uh, here let me get rid of those uh, actually I, what I'm going to do is I want to set it up okay I'm gonna play a bad move here just to burn a move so I can get this pawn structure okay I just wanted to see you to see the, the the pawn structure this pawn structure is very potent for white now this this bishop is no good and I've had a lot of people what they try to do is it might take black some maneuvering they try to go trade off this fiend kiddo bishop and that takes a lot of time and white just improves his position elsewhere uh, but this particular pawn structure is great for white, especially with the freedom of the of the 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 pieces for the middle game. You know, you're getting that knight knight into d5 and so forth. And even if black doesn't uh, trade off the bishop, uh, this bishop may come into play late, much later, by way of f1. Eventually, uh, something is going to get traded off. Uh, black will eventually, out of desperation, try b5 and and this pawn will be taking and suddenly this this bishop which is redeployed has some scope so uh, if you can get this pawn structure as white versus that pawn structure is black uh, you you've definitely are gonna have all the ch all the winning chances okay so uh, if there's one more th comment since we can't play we can't hang the queen obviously I just did that to show the pawn structure because this pawn is pinned see whoop it won't let me play f3 uh, white can just put the queen here and this helps secure this knight just in case black gets tactical and then white can chase the queen out and play f3 okay um, or maybe chase it out with knight d5 it's I mean white just has a virt uh, virtual a whole bunch of virtual happy choices here okay so uh, what white does is fine though he develops a piece and now in some of these combinations where the uh, uh, bishop is taking this rook, uh, white doesn't need to take with the knight. He might take with the with the queen. That keeps the knight closer to the center, and the queen's on this critical diagonal. Uh, who knows? There might be some mating mating possibilities on g7. Okay, so this is fine. White develops a piece, and. Uh, I'm not sure if rook d8 is the best move, but as I was saying, black has a difficult game here, uh, just just simply because of the overall uh, overall structure of, of this um, of this setup. Uh, white could still play e4 here for the same reasons I gave, but what he does is fine too. Uh, this threatens to pick up the bishop pair, gets ready to sink a knight in on onto d5. Uh, white's got a, a a great position here. So black backs up his bishop, and then white develops his rook, and and white's getting everything he wants here. And uh, let's talk for a moment. And what what can black do here? You know, it looks like at first glance you'd say, well, black's fine. He's he's castled. His four minor pieces are developed. He he, uh, he has his queen developed, and white doesn't. That makes up to some degree for the fact that the black queen rook is not developed. It does does make up for that, but Black can't just keep sitting here because White's White's getting getting a, a strong position. He's getting getting a bind here. Uh, how can how can Black make some progress? Um, well, it, it comes back to what I was saying are the original ideas in this position. Black's going to have to try to get B5 in. Uh, it, it's like one of the strategies if you get it, uh, you're on the black side of the Meroxy bind. Uh, where and because eventually this pawn might may find his way up to e4, Black's going to have to break the position with b5 and then try to break with d5. That's one of the themes to play with Black against a Roxy type position, and this is very close to that. 
So black's not poised to do that. Um, he, his queen is in the way of the B pawn, okay? Um, what else? Um, this rook is not on, on B8 to support uh, the B5 push. Uh, there's not enough wood st uh, supporting all this. So black's really going to have to do some regrouping here, and it's not clear how he's going to do it. For instance, if, if queen C7, uh, white just sinks a knight into d5, and uh, black can't take it unless he wants to part with the bishop pair, because uh, because that'd be a pawn fork. But I mean, this looks this looks terrific for white. Now there's a tempo on the queen, and black can't take the knight because he's going to walk into a pin. So now the queen's going to have to move, and uh, you know white white just getting a nice game. And look here, I'm playing uh, the way. Uh, maybe black tr should try it to try to get b5 in, but suddenly b6 becomes weak, and you can just plunk the knight right into b6. So maybe you play uh, rook b8 first. Okay. Well then, here comes uh, bishop e3. Now, unless black plays b5 right now, if he tries a6 here, uh, white just sinks sinks a piece into b6. And this is just looking lovely for White. He's just getting all kinds of uh, all kinds of space. So, does is Black able to uh, do something here? There could be some tactics flying here. Let's see, because based on the weakness of this knight. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Uh, guys, there's just what, what happens if we do this? I mean, maybe there's a better move, but bang. Uh, the queen's under attack. You're going to have to safeguard your queen, right? Now we pick this guy up. And look at this. White's got the two bishops uh, and for the rook. And uh, black's got some weak pawns. Okay, d6 and f6. Uh, White's, White's going to win this. You know, it's, it's just so close to becoming good, f becoming a good game for white. Uh... Black's black's in trouble, okay, it, and only because uh, because he's not playing the 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 known and proven strategies, and that's what I gave earlier. How he should be preparing this for with an a6, rook b8, uh, you know, this and the knight takes d4 lines and so forth. But anyway, let's see what Black does. Uh, he plays this move, which is actually a losing move, and it's unfortunate that that a game that uh, uh, that's so interesting black should fall apart so quickly uh, I, I think a lot of it just is due to the fact that it's it's such a potent opening for white just like that very, I think I mentioned it earlier in the video where uh, the game of the week uh, who's it? Uh, Terry Malloy versus somebody where uh, black played the knight or variation of the Sicilian defense and, and Malloy gets this 13 f5 pawn sacrifice in and in practice, Black hardly ever wins with that, and he hardly ever draws. He's he's losing all the time. It's it's just one of those openings that you're going to have to know if you're going to play. Um, and but you see, now White has a tactical win now, and it, uh, it uh, if you'd like to try to find it, pause the video, and resume it. But look, let's let's let you do that if you want to try to solve it. Uh, what it has to, here, you resume the video. What it has to do with is the fact that uh, Black's got a potential undefended uh, piece here. Knight, this knight on b4. What's guarding it? Well, the queen is. Okay, I, I really don't understand the move. Where's the knight going? Um, it's not attacking a2. White probably wasn't planning to play queen c2. So I don't know what what Black is trying to do with this with this move. It would have been better to have developed the rook, but as I explained, White still got a great position. But the, only the queen's guarding it. So what White needs to do is chase that queen out of there, and, and this does it. Uh, the queen has to ha, has a limited amount of squares to defend the knight, and most of them are covered. Okay, the only squares that defend this knight are here. I'll put dots. Those are only squares that, that defend the knight. I'll put the circles. And you, as you can see, two of them are covered. Uh, c5 loses the queen, and b5 loses the queen. So that only 
uh, and black can't go and counterattack something else, so that leaves queen a5. But what's happened now is black has stepped into a pin. Okay, whoops. <laughs> My, I'm not drunk. I just can't draw. <laughs> okay, white stepped into a pin here. Okay, so boom, a3, and now white's winning a piece. And for the most part, this game's over. Uh, you know, you you drop a piece unless you can get some play somewhere. You're in, you're in trouble. But unfortunately, because of the uh, nice uh, possibilities that white has from this symmetrical English, uh, black really has no hope. So I'm not going to have much comment the rest of the way, simply because uh, the game is easily winning. You know, maybe white misses a better way to win. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. White just uh, is is clearly winning and. And the and uh, black is completely devoid of counterplay. Although he did get a little bit, we'll see as we go there. We'll just kind of run through the moves, and white just starts making exchanges, uh, trade down, keep trading, and eventually uh, black black's going to capitulate. Okay, so you know just trade pieces, and black obliges, and white's, white's getting a lot of them off now. And he finally gets the b5 break in, but too late. This should allow the queen to develop with check at some point. There it is. Okay, so uh, white's just still a clear piece ahead. S uh, sinks a rook on the seventh rank. That looks good. Uh, what else for black? You know, got to try something. Um, Now f7 is a problem, so he solves that for the moment. And white can afford to give 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 back a pawn or two. So here's here's black's counterplay, but white still has an extra piece, and and now he's threatening a mate and two. So black has to deactivate a rook. And now this next move is is clever. You might want to pause the video see if you can find it. What, what do you think uh, black or white does here? Okay, you resume the video. Uh, Bishop e6. It's just such a nice little move. It's putting a third attacker on f7. Black has no defend, doesn't have enough defenders on it. And if pawn takes bishop, queen g7 is mate. Uh, and if he doesn't do that, bishop takes f7 check is going to force mate because. Uh, Rook would have to take. So the only possible move Black has is to give up his queen. Who wants to do that? Uh, now Black can get a piece back. Well, let's see. Yeah, he can get a piece back, but he's going to lose this. And which? Well, let's see. King in the corner. We can go. Which pawn do we want? You know, even though Black has a pass pawn, it's it's not long for the game. Uh, whoop, let's go up here, and let's just look at taking. Let's take this pawn. Let's force the king onto the back rank, and and uh, this pawn's not going anywhere. And, and eventually, uh, white will win. The only reason to play something like this out is if uh, white's running out of time. But that's all not going to happen here. I, you know, it wasn't much. It, it, it much to the game, at least from uh, white's point. If you know the opening, these. This opening is deadly, and you have to. If you're going to play it as white, you have a lot of chances with it. If you're going to defend against it as defend against it as black, you need to know the ideas. And hopefully, this video has explained something. Now, I've gone 28 minutes. Let's see what N4 has to say. I pretty much said everything I want to say. Okay, let me slide his notes over here. I choose lot. Uh, Tavia's game as game of the week of round six. I will mention a few things about other games soon. Okay, let's see. La, uh, La Tavia and Iceface played symmetrical English, which went to quite popular variation with d4 pawn trade. In this variation, Black needs some creativity to get his bishop out from c8. There are many lines that lead to slight advantage for white. Queen a5 seems work the best way with similar ideas that I deal with in the next paragraph with queen b6, c5, h5. Okay, he's right about that. I didn't mention that line. Let's uh, let's get to it. Uh, okay, 
the main line is knight takes d4, and I'm giving you that. Now, uh, well, I have Watson out. Let me see what Watson says about queen a5. Now, this is the older line. I, I know there's some lines where the queen does come out to a5, and then it ends up on h5. I've had that played against me before. White shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, now, Watson... Get to the right. Eighth moves by black. Other than um, knight takes d4. Okay, so knight, there's d6, which I mentioned. Yeah, queen a5 is one of the main lines. There's also another line I didn't give. I've had played against me, knight g4. This puts some pressure on, C f on, uh, on uh, f3, and the plan is to bring the queen out and shift the queen over. And then knight takes knight on knight takes d4 is the main line. Uh, queen a5 is note b in this book. And I'm on, if you have a copy, I'm on page 67. Um, and we're looking for variation b, queen a5. Uh, okay. Queen a5 in N4 suggesting, let's see. Does he say any more? I just want to have the diagram ready. Um, anyway, doesn't seem to say much more. He gives knight to b3 as the main line. And he says an interesting game came from with 9e3 in uh, Silber versus Gurganids, uh, 1959. He also quotes a game, Rogoff. Lombard in Haifa, 1970. Rogoff is a uh, retired United States Grandmaster. Haven't seen his name around in years. And, uh, okay. Lombard sounds French, and Haifa, I believe, is in Israel. But there's a couple games there if you want to look them up with the Queen A5 line. Um, anyway. He didn't say too much about it. He mentioned some ideas here. Let's let's get to what he said. Okay. Uh, he now his next comment: Queen B6, Knight C2, and he says there are some games of this position with lots of wins uh, for White. Okay, so that kind of backs up what I was saying. It's one of these openings that White wins a lot with. Nevertheless, for example, Queen C5 seems seems to work pretty well. The idea behind the move is. Not just the threat of the C form, but but rather move queen to safer squares on king side, especially to h5. Black also so has some tactical threats on white's king, for example, with knight g4, first trade bishops with bishop h3 after d7 pawn is moved. White has some more space, so trading pieces and also exchanging pawns is go along with black's situation. Another possibility. Now here he give. Uh, after knight c2, he does mention knight b3. I said that was given. Another, let's bring his note back. Uh, knight b3. He gives us knight b3, d6. I haven't mentioned his queen c5 idea yet. I'll come back to that because I want to look it up and see if there's any theory on it uh, in a moment. Okay. d6. Um, bishop e3. Now the queen's going back to d8. Ugh, ugly. Um, here's black has wasted wasted a couple queen moves. Okay, now c5 and then d5. When white's plan is queenside extension, play on dark squares, e.g. target on d6, knight or bishop if e6 will be played. So he wants to get a, if if this move comes up, he wants to get a knight or a bishop in, into d6. Okay, so, uh, I mean, I did mention the variations. There were other games where white did play knight c2, and I mentioned three games. I'm not sure if he, uh, like quoted earlier, I'm not sure if knight c2 was uh, in played in all of them. I just gave some variations. I think so knight, knight to bishop 2, let's see now. The only move given for black is 
is uh, after knight b2 is d6. Okay, so it, 33 years old. I think Genfork mentioned there are some games with queen here. Uh, let's let's examine it. So you know, like I said, it's 33 years old. There, there's going to be uh, more analysis on these openings. Now he did say queen c5 seems to work pretty well. The idea behind the move is not just to threaten the c4 pawn, but rather move to queen to safer squares. On the king's side, especially to h5, black also has some threats on white king. I read all that. I'm just looking. What, is, what does white do to, to secure uh, c4? Well, thematic would be, let's just analyze a little bit. You want to you uh, be playing this knight to uh, e3 anyways, because you want to get it up to d5. Now, if d6 right away, White could play knight d5, and now that queen's not running. Oh no, you can't play that knight to d5. You're hanging c4 again. I guess you have to play this knight to d5, and now the the black king is or black queen is cut off from going there. Um, so another another idea is let's see. I've had something similar before. We can we can do this this guarding of the pawn with the pawn because as I said this knight is covering this and the moment black transfers his queen white can offer a queen trade and I've actually had this position uh, I'm, I, I know I have and but maybe the difference is, is this pawn already got it to d6 I think it's because black has spent a tempo Queen to b6 to c5 to h5. It's more direct to go queen a5 and queen to h5. So I've had something very similar to this, and the difference being this pawn got to d was already on d6 because black has lost a tempo. And uh, here, for instance, if if knight g4, white can just play h3, and the the knight has to go back and and white can trade queens if he wants he does well if he doesn't um, but uh, that there's some blacks missing a tempo this pawn because the queen took two steps to get to h5 so that's one drawback another drawback with queen b6 uh, yeah I, like I say I've had experience with this line and and uh, I know that white just got really really good play here what else can black do if this pen pawn was on d6 he would have time to throw bishop g4 in but that's fine too you get this f3 which is an ideal pawn structure and as i said we don't mind so much if if black trades off this bishop uh, with bishop h3 okay so it's probably better than what black did but uh, black has a tough time in this position Okay, now he, on a variation, is we're going to go up to 11, bishop d2. That's his next comment. Okay, what's he have to say here? 11, bishop d2. Also, knight e3 and bishop b2 are alternatives. This, um, he didn't mention my e4 move. Uh, okay, that's all right. Like I said, I've got experience with this. The e4 move is fine, and for all the reasons I gave. Okay, now his next comment is on move 12. He says that he gives gives something else other than bishop e6. Um, instead of bishop e6, bishop d7 was possible, and it would have continued. Um, Knight c d5, knight takes, knight takes, queen d4. Now a few things about that position. So let's get that position up on the board first. Uh, was it knight c d5? Am I doing this right? Let's see. Uh, yeah, queen d4. 
because you gotta got to save the queen, right? God save the queen. <laughs> okay, queen d4. Now a few things about this position. Uh, white again has some space, but black some compensation for it. Uh, black control many dark squares due to his strong fian keto bishop on g7. Uh, after one trade, black has also counterattack possibilities on queenside with thematical b5 break, which would strengthen the weaker bishop on d7. White has some advantage because he's able to chase the queen d4 away and fight for the dark squares, probably by trading the dark bishops. Okay, so let's evaluate some of that. Okay, first thing is uh, black has a threat. Black's threatening to, to take this, this critter. So n fork is suggesting trading the dark squared bishops. Well, this is white's better bishop. Uh, as I pointed earlier, white, white has no problem trading this bishop off, even if the diagonal is open, because the, the dark squared bishop is the preferred bishop in, in the ending. And the reason is because of these pawns being on light squares. OK, that's one of the main reasons. It's on the opposite color of them. So. Let's look at both and evaluate them. OK, this could trade queens and bishops. And I, th I think black's done fine out of this. Uh, a lot of white steam is gone, you know. Uh, with, the, with the peace exchanges, the pressure, the, there's so much less pressure on black. And the e7 pawn could be covered by king f8 if you know if, if white ever gets this knight into d5 and, and black doesn't want this knight tied down i i think this this exchange helps uh whoops went too far back okay here 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 i think bishop c3 is the wrong idea whoops bishop c3 is the wrong idea here what we have to do is stop and move the rook now um what can what can black do okay he's saying to prepare for the b5 break okay how do we get how are we going to do that uh let's let's consider a6 okay that's one way to start setting it up um now do we want to reduce the scope of this bishop with e3 to chase the queen out um maybe where does this queen go e5 c5 a7. Um, if it goes to e5, maybe we can chase it some more. But I don't. We we don't want to trade dark squared bishops though. We, even though this we could do it and keep the queens on. We just don't. I, I'm a kind of against e3 simply because it reduces the scope of this bishop. Um, let's see. But I want to. I want to get bishop c3 in without trading queens. So that leaves queen e1 and queen c2. OK, let's try queen c2. Now black tries b5, as he suggested. Now I have the option of playing bishop e3, and I kind of like that. Uh, bishop e3 looks looks good to me. And I don't know, this queen could be in trouble here. Uh, can white get away with f5? And maybe not, or f4. I'm I'm just seeing that if the queen comes back to e6, there's a knight fork. But no, there isn't. This queen, this bishop will fall with check. The knight was guarding it. Uh, but even though you don't play pawn to f4, you could play bishop to f4. You know that there's, this queen's a little embarrassed. Queen e, queen f5 might be answered by e4. And if the queen comes back to d4, we can just chase it again. Right, chase develop this rook. So it it's White's got some activity here. I, I can't solve it all here. I, I'm not going to try to evaluate this. I'd spend an hour and trying to tell you what the best move is. But White's got a lot of chances here. Uh, so aside from playing b5, White Black could try queen a7. Just you know, and this queen's just trying to find a home uh, and trying to find. Uh, a safe place, and I, and it all boils down to the it's exposing the f the flaw of queen b6. Uh, the the queen had to lose tempos getting 
getting into action, even with Enfork's plan. He was just down uh, a tempo getting to h5 when queen a5 will get it there a tempo quicker. Okay, so excellent comments by Enfork. Um, now we're going to get down to move 13. Let's revert. And as I said, this is the losing move. What does Enfork have to say? Um, Knight d4 black, oops, knight b4 black was doing okay, for example, with rook a c8. Yeah, I did suggest, just suggest that without any analysis. I said black needs to do s something else or what else, you know. And, you know, I was talking about the, the, the plan of a6 and trying to get b5 in. I, you know, I was saying the queen's in front of this pawn and develop this rook. And, you know, developing the rook, black, black is actually half a tempo ahead in development, okay. Uh, blacks develop both rooks, and technically, well, this rook's developed, but it's not developed again. Uh, black got all four minor pieces out, uh, so does white. White doesn't have his queen out. Black's ahead in development, pure and simple, but white has the space and and uh, and command of that d5 square. So let's see what n fork says about rook a c8, because I made no comment about it. Um, Bishop e6 is a bit uncomfortable because it blocks the e pawn advance after white plays knight c d5, and white is happy to trade one knight for the bishop. Okay, so let's see. Knight c d5, and white's happy to trade one knight for the bishop. Well, it uh, looks like black is going to have to do that because that queen is, this, this queen is getting exposed. Um, I don't know, it's, you know, we can go back to this idea, maybe. Whoop. Let's see, queen d4. Um, you don't want to play bishop c3 yet, but I don't know, th this queen is just, it's just ugly there. It's just absolutely ugly. Here, here we go, knight c2. Um, where's black put the queen? If he puts it on... He has g4, and we can kick it with a pawn. Oh my god, that, that's just going to run into trouble. <laughs> Somehow, Black, Black's, Black's going to lose his queen here, I think. f3 looks good, as opposed to h3. Uh, and then, then on queen here, you have knight here. Oh my goodness, you know. Uh, wow. Uh, Black may not lose his queen, but white's just picking up tempos everywhere. My, you know, oh my god. You know, he could have played h3. I just like f3 because it's thematic and stuff I do. Where, where's black put the queen now? Uh, well, we gave him a5. I'll go back there. You know, this this queen's running out of gas. She's been running all around the board. Reminds me of the story where uh, Capablanca was playing a... Uh, what they call a live chess game. In other words, they had men and women dressed up as chess pieces. And uh, uh, Capablanca had a... He, he thought the, the, the person playing his queen was very attractive, and he wanted to ask her out after the game was over. And what happened was uh, he noticed his pieces were being exchanged the, 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 they would leave. They wouldn't stand on the side of the board like you do when you have a normal chess game. Uh, you know, you capture pieces or you line them up, right? And what Capablanca did was he he didn't want to trade queens because the queen, she would leave. So he, he kept avoiding queen trades. And he, the, his opponent would offer a queen trade and he'd send her across the other side of the board. You know, you know it's on a large uh, outside chess board. And, and Anyway, he kept her, kept her in the game, kept avoiding exchanges, and as a result, he couldn't win. He had to draw, and uh, then he uh, went up to her and said, "Hey, let let's go out to dinner," and, and and or whatever he said. And she said, "I'd love to, but you wore me out, moved me all around the board. I got to go home." So he never got his date. But uh, anyway, uh, that's what this queen is doing. It's just busy as a bee, and it's because of that the flaw in queen b six. So. Uh, Black's certainly alive here. Uh, he doesn't lose the game as he does, but White's got chances. But let's go back to what Enfork said. And uh, Enfork is saying give up the bishop for the knight. Okay, well, White's happy with this. Um, the queen's at under attack again. What are you going to do? 
Well, like, do you have to take? You don't have to take, but you know who wants this queen? Just it's just hurting. Let's take another one. Okay, now how do you want to take? I'll t I I would take with the bishop. Why? Because it keeps the diagonal open. Now white just has the two bishops. Um, bishop is better than a knight. Two bishops are better than a bishop and knight. Uh, theoretically, eventually white can try to reach that classic end game I mentioned in so many videos. Stoltz cashed in the Hague 1928, game 159 of my library, which shows how the bishop beats the knight in the ending. Okay, what else does he have to say about this game? Okay. Um, moving on to move 21, bishop c3. Let's revert to the game. Bishop c3. Um, Latavia found easy moves to simplify material advantage. Yeah, just simplify, just like I said, trade pieces. And his next comment is on 33, bishop e6, which is the last move of the game. And that comment says, bishop e6 finished the game with nice combination. White played very well, and the tactical slip made it very hard for black even to try to seek any complications or attacks. Well done, Latavia. Well, yeah, I agree. It was a good game. Uh, and if you didn't know your game was easy because uh, theory says it's easy, well, you do now. But still, you know, it's good that you won a game that theory says that you stand better in. Okay. That concludes this. We wait for the playoffs to start. Uh, I guess they have started. But we wait for nominations to start and a selection there. And I look forward to uh, making the next video in this series. I want to thank everyone for their time. Take care.